Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in the Pride of Fall demo in which we're playing as the autonomous troop of Zibz Zib Uh Suaj. Um population is of about a third of a million. Got a lot of Polish people here. I guess objective restore Polish state under the lily. I guess so. We're led by Andre Duda? He's a dude, former president of Poland uh, since twenty fifteen. Cool. Uh we got the gray lilies. Cool. Um, we have division within ranks, which is not very cool. And then we have partisan legacy, which is not good. We have some benefits, have some cons. But we're going to begin with everything that's uh, ours. We'll get to Poland. Not that we have much left besides courage and patriotism. Surrounded by potential enemies, must call a great jamboree and Nadwarczynski Grad to decide how the eternal summer action will look like. Eh. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and uh, pulse, uh, get some research speed. We're going to go and grab a little bit of their production efficiency cap. We'll grab a little bit of a civilian factory. We got a, this is a long territory. Let's not put it. Oh, nope, no, right there. And then we'll put you. I kind of have a feeling we won't get all the way to building all this stuff up, but we're just gonna do it anyways, just for the funsies of it. And we got nothing here. Oh my god, this is too much for me. Torsion siege equipment. What trebuchets? Well, I know we're gonna need found and self-made melee weapons. We're definitely probably gonna need that. Found special forces equipment. Um, primitive AT sounds necessary. Uniforms probably going to need some uniforms. Slings. Uh, civilian drones, civilian aircraft. Um, I'll be honest, I have no idea. Firearms and range equipment, melee equipment, anti-tank. These guys are six combat width, forty-eight defense. These are basically militia. Well, compared to infantry, normal infantry. Infantry has better defense, a little bit less breakthrough, just better defense overall, and more organization, which is more important, so. These guys need melee equipment. Oh, they need the exact same thing, don't they? Then why not just make these guys? You need a lot of uniforms, fire equipment. Oh, you don't need any melee equipment, so. Oh. What are you guys? Are you guys special forces? No, you're not. Oh, you're, you're melee infantry. Well, let's make one of those two. Because defense is not bad, they're just not very good. We need uniforms. Do we make guns? What are these guys? Looks like special forces. Forest infantry. Oh, they're pretty strong. Oh, well, we can. We'll make one of these too. Um, firearms. Do we have. Do we even have firearms? I don't know if we have firearms here. Firearms and range equipment. Special forces equipment. Found special forces equipment, I guess. Yeah, um, traumatic weapons. Oh, that's supply stuffs. I guess we make slings. Oh, are those, oh, is that what's considered? Oh, those are firearms. Huh. Well, okay. We got a lot of stuff here. Sidecars, motorcyclists, civilian transport vehicles, bicycles, torsion weaponry. Sure, why not? So what do we have here to start with? Well, right, special forces here, led by no combat penalties. Um, Marcel Zoska Sabat, and then oh, we've one melee infantry, and the rest is just militia. Oh boy, oh god, that's not good. Uh, Kamil Alek Zepstika. I am so butchering these names. Badly, it's not funny. And what is Orza Zelensky? 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 Something like that. Uh, they're gonna train, and they're gonna use up all the equipment probably. Um, oh, the urbanization of Lutsky. Lutsky. Is that how you pronounce it? Hmm. Oh my god. Buy anti tank foreign guns. Try it. Uniforms. Oh my god, that's so much political power. Holy crap. Uh, we get maybe one a day. Uh, what's next? A country stands on a crossroad. The scout state shape is looking clear and clear, and now it's choice to make it reflect on it for years, if not decades. A choice between the vision of conservative and idealist cliques as they move it towards the escalating their so far peaceful con conflict. Call for a jamboree. It's 4:30 in the morning. The entire war top fortress is shrouded in complete darkness. The only exception being the uh, high assistant's room. His owner, the Mez Zitik, sits at the desk, poring over disastrous reports with the dim light of a kerosene lamp as his only companion. So all scouting things a mess with the next uh, no top to bottom directives, which means. In all aspects of the state are one big free-for-all, depending on what the minor officers could improvise. Zitek knows that he has to think of something, or at least he'll be best banished. He may be the avatar of Rudy, or Ruddy, but that doesn't mean he's irreplaceable. 
He's only an actor in the vast scouts of diligent enough they can find another person filling the role of the spiritual successor of the long-dead World War II hero. Well, for show, sure, anyways, who knows? Maybe those maniacs from the Great Lily will want to reenact Operation Arsenal in a realistic manner as some sort of gruesome ritual. It's no use to getting caught up in all that now, though. Thing is, it already figured something out if only Scoutmaster Duda hadn't been so unwilling to sign any documents introducing the reforms, as opposed to Zetek. Duda is unmovable as he's one of the most legitimate leaders in the post Polum. The high assistant is just about to give up. We notice that under the pile of other documents, there's a letter with a green emblem depicting a crocodile. The symbol is most trusted him. Why is it there? He made sure to tell the couriers that those are to be delivered separately due to their importance. He quickly opened the envelope and couldn't believe his eyes. Jean, you magnificent dude, tell us up. Turns out the most competent man, Jean Kulbozowski, found the former president's wife and daughter hiding in one of the hidden self-sufficient government bunkers. Finally, some leverage to force his oath of a scoutmaster to comply. Zetek smiled and quickly wrote a letter with some indirect threats attached to a pre-prepared proclamation of the 2027 Jamboree written by Zetek himself, ready to be signed by Duda. Thanks for finally looking up. Darn those couriers. Oh, okay, so we should read this to him. As a Polish tradition, countless factions and narratives within our clique squabble over who's responsible for the fall of Poland. Was it the leftists? Was it the pacifists and the weaklings scared of fighting in mighty forests? Or was it the fallout of those who didn't pay much respect to those who served their homeland in the past? Well, as it turns out, there's a group matching all those descriptions, the city dwellers. The liberal-minded, craven, and non-patriotic bourgeoisie who drove the Polish village folk into irrelevancy and then started rebelling once the rural population-friendly party came to power. We are to assure that after, through our war reconquest, the urban population will fall to regain or fail to regain their past political power and influence in Polish media and culture. There is our internal split between the scouts and how our joint government achieves this end. The ZHR proposes a less painful approach of empowering the rurality, milking the funds of technology off the city dwellers, making it easier for them to peacefully settle in the countryside, while they give you some more proper value. As the Great Lily sees as mere hand waving in their vision, then ideal Poland would be completely one devoid of urban influence, as one devoid of cities themselves, as such. According to them, any large towns and cities not to be just depopulated and de-urbanized, but fully demolished and preferably raised to the ground so that the space occupied by them could be reforested in the purpose to serve Poland and those who were ready to defend her. And so the city dwellers, though once again and for all, abandon their degenerate, comfortable lifestyles and their urban BS will be forever done and dealt with. Urban swelling, despite our best efforts of their urbanization and our void vitiaship, relentlessly swells and grows like a putrid tumor. Much of the disgruntlement spreading within our ranks. If we can't stop this illness, our soldiers lose hope in the success of our troops. All in construction new districts. As the population grows in size due to the rise in birth rates and migration, our cities begin to sprawl. The most unfortunate that our fellow Poles decided to contribute to the city's sprawl instead of noble countryside as forced living. We can stop that by reintroducing zoning laws and spatial planning as an excuse for forbidding the raising of new districts. Huh. Construction speed goes down. Reduce carbon emissions. Whether we like it or not, the presence of urban centers is unavoidable, at least for now. As such, we have to make them as friendly to the neutral, natural environment as possible. As such, we plan to survey our territory in search of sources of vile carbon emissions put them down with taxes um no we're making five you know what we can hurt construction speed let's see what happens with that this costs quite a bit of political power but we want to rename Poland too but we'll see what happens you know um the deliberations begin we're making support of the of Reznal if you want to read about that please you to have but oh to order the voice of the troop leader Orzal was booming in the open fields near the forest I still can't believe Ruddy or Rudy finally got the scoutmaster to call the Jamboree. Now all of the representatives are here to tell us or Zaz's job to make them see reason and try to achieve a partial compromise. It won't be easy. The overzealous idealists will try to sway other groups to, uh, through their very outlandish ideals while being hampered by the ZHR and verbally attacked by Zwaziza. Zwaziza. And the creeps from the Grey Lily will stare just eerily. Better than having them help them step in. My dear companions, it's time to talk. Our economy, our proud army, our society. All the differences between the idealists and the conservatives are undeniable. Both groups agree that the fall happened because of morality of Poles of integrating and rebuilding the Polish nation of spiritual courts is more than necessary. The main issues that divide the two factions, however, is always the scale of our action, whether the civilian population should be forced to emulate the harsh aspects of scout's life. I want to buy German guns. Ever since the European army halted its advance, the Euro Commissariats have devoided or devolved into what is basically a country-sized black market operation, and German guns become a commonly available good or even currency of sorts. We don't even really need to search for any German ex soldiers or smugglers. We can just hit up any local arms dealers to get our hands on them. That'd be nice. Legal overhaul. All drugs are illegal with harsh drugs illegal. Voluntary membership. Stronger together. Merge scout laws with penal laws. Every child a scout. Isolating cities. Stadtflut macht frei. Stronger together. So basically, you don't get anything except you get 0.5% more population. And you lose 5% construction speed and out output. And with this one, you lose monthly population, army organization regain, more construction, more organization and whatnot. 
I don't know. I'm gonna try this one. Well, decadence has brought on our nation from an all, to an all-time low. The scouting values are the solution that will render Poland eternal and safe for the environment as a bonus. We know this. We fought for this. What's stopping us from making a law? Fear? Or do we still harbor embers of faith and liberal pluralism even now? No more. The nation will be as close to our moral paragon as possible. The punishments for straying from our path will be severe in public. No one will dare stand against us within and without. Do we have to do both? God dang, I guess we do both. I want to buy more guns. Every child a scout. All your children belong to us. To create a new, stronger nation, we'll train the youngs in our ways, so they won't stray even in, in their old years. Whatever, whatever child we found, we'll have a term to do in our. Uh, we have a term to do in our organization. There'll be no excuses for weakness to send childish rebellions within our pristine ranks. Our economy. As of now, the financial matters have had very ad hoc solutions. This approach lacks any foresight. Without a proper plan, we end up with a chaotic camp layout and a giant waste of precious materials. They also. We also suffer from unsupervised partisan like methods of acquiring said resources, and the fact that our attempts at a modernization can be cut short by a single overzealous grade lily official makes this a truly precarious situation. No matter which path we take, we'll need to bargain establishing transparent economic law if you were to flourish in the coming years. No additional camps. Lose population. Oh, get more population. That's not bad. Improvised workshops. Oh, well, that's interesting. Food tributes. Supply consumption goes down, which is nice. Ooh, better consumer goods. Why me? Robber economy, our direction. Conservative economic plan. Mm. I like the construction being a factory output. You'll lose a little bit of population, but whatever. Let's go scouting industrial. We're, uh, we're going to go scouts. The idea is that the mere belief in ourselves will save us, but in order to project these beliefs, we need sheer power, industrial, and even literal electricity. We'll take it, our workshops a step further and organize large scale industrial operations supervised by our scouts in order to modern, modernize the economy. You no know, real factories, yep, mere counts will do for now. National, organized national demonstrations. We are Poles, people of noble, battle hard and breed. Countless times throughout our history, we fought the enemies of our state under the most dire conditions, imaginable, and yet we prevailed. Despite our efforts, however, a large part of Poland is nowadays inhabited by traitors and defeatists. Feel no shame in selling out of our land and a focus of foreigners, leaving only a small and most important fragile alliance of various kinds of patriots on the front lines in the fight for Poland. Thus, we should organize public demonstrations of our will to find our dedication to the homeland in order to better our image in the eyes of fellow patriots. Recruit from the national youth. Ooh. Our many manly appearance and implacable implacability inspire many youngsters to want to risk their lives for Poland and potentially die with honor. While lots of them are too, still too young to serve in the army, they'll still gladly join ranks to train in the field and further indoctrinate themselves. And besides, thankfully for them, or rather for us, post-fall Poland is just too broken, far too broken and chaotic for anyone to judge us for using soldiers that might be a little too young for military service and utilize the undesirables. War prisoners, criminals, and sexual deviants, and various turncoats and traitors, people in broad and have and habitating our prisons, whom have had to house and feeds from our own money. Why should undesirables like them live in better conditions than some of our own hard-working comrades? Why should undesirables like them be provided with what is essentially welfare, whereas good folks have to toil pl plowing fields and extracting resources? It's a pathological error that has to be immediately corrected. Those dudes ought to be utilized instead of living like kings and clogging our prisons up. We should delegate some of our worst prisons to work for us, be it agriculture, forestry, factories, mines, or in work camps, too. All right, farming methods. Proud army. We're uh, proud of our military, but we're not blinded by hubris. Loose squads of scouts aren't fighting for us to unify Poland. If they are to be, we'll have to devise a cohesive organization. Now, luck so discord among the conservatives or idealist circles, depending on our uh, uh, you know, choice. And we have a couple of uh, peppermint tea to keep us nice and warm. Volunteer. We get more stability from this one. Holy Cross Mountain Uprising, huh? Less than zero. Cool. Oh, hello. Well, there's that one. Go tell the gray lilies. Remove the gray lilies. Change plans. Also, I'm, I have to switch this around just because, like, or whatever. I guess I'm just going to play auto way just in case it gets, like, copyright struck. Uh, gray lily auxiliaries. Total mobilization already. Holy crap. Wow. Change of plans. Um, volunteer army, more division attack, partisan legacy. Oh, I don't know. Probably workers. Farming method, farming system. Feeder, our need to feed ourselves is constant. Imports and raids are anything but a constant source of wheat. We so desperately require. We need a reliable farm that can feed our dead and into peace and war. Lack naturally, everything will be led by our scouts foremen. So here, we'll buy more guns because we have no literally no guns. 
The sounds are already with Radom. A real patriot supports their massive products, hence why we should hit up the arms manufacturers in Ra Radom. Radom. There's even certain post saying about this. Kutza uh, Chowalichi uh, Swego Nyachi, which roughly translates to stop creaming yourself to foreign garbage and start appreciating your own crap instead. <clears throat> and buy guns from China. The I mean, Chinese guns might be tricky, as we'll have to appease them. Appeal to them for the Chinese government itself, plus, we don't exactly know what to expect from them as they only contact with Chinese guns. And anyone in the government ever had was that one account found on Battlefield 4 and stored on one of the computers we stole for one of our bureaus. So, at least if we choose or we're dry, we'll be able to make these military requests as how it is opening ourselves for future Chinese investments. Surely, in warm CCP's opinion about us and make our future deals with them easier. God, let's get out solo and go Battlefield 4. Jesus. Buy guns from Sweden. Very few Swedish guns have reached Poland due to the Swedish government's surprising reluctance to partake in European intervention. Their scarcity has given them a certain status among the populace. However, the usage of them is seen as both more prestigious in the eyes of gangsters and is more patriotic than the usage of German ones in the eyes of the common folk. Through our connections with the always enigmatic master weapon dealer, we can secure a large supply of armament provided by Swedish smugglers for ourselves. Armed with the Ukrainians, a Ukrainian humanitarian mission in Poland is Poland Prades of saboteurs from Rozal and Nisko, leaving mostly those with a dubious reputation on the side of the border. Nationals, ex humanitarian workers, enraged by Braun's betrayal and refusal of Ukrainian help. Humanitarian workers have banded up together with Polish villagers and formed a joint quasi military government of sorts. A few Ukrainian border guards to occupy Medica and gangsters. Gangsters who are more than willing to sell their old armaments left behind by the Soviet government of the Russian army in 1991 and 2012, 2022. Wow. By Russian guns. Once ne Navalny took power in Moscow and started his crusade against the corruption and crime that has been synonymous with the Russian government since times immemorial, many Ruski mafiosos and gang bangers ran abroad, trying to escape his judgment. With no perspective in life, seemingly left to die in a hostile world, they have been saved by the downfall of the Polish state, which allowed them to get back to a life of crime by forming a competition of German arms dealers and even establishing back some of the old connections with the pro Russian Polish political organizations and remnants of the old guard of the Russian politics. Him. Or American guns. Even small-time American gun vendors can procure you with some serious firepower. And with our connections, it won't be hard to smuggle that goes all the way to Europe. Let's get ourselves some proper liberation tools, shall we, partner? You know, we're going to go with that one just because I'm an American, so we're going to have to. Um, our direction. Uh, the scouting, a scout economic council has been created and will soon convene for the first time. We put in charge of side of the way will ultimately tackle economy and production. A conservative creation will contain idealists who always... Already insist production should be limited to small arms and other partisan devices. The founders of the council argue for more measured solutions regarding procurement of resources and to some extent even soldiers. A few radicals will even argue for branching off to create some to create and use real river ships. Well, we'll see, I guess. For right now, proposed security measures, private health care, social social spending, social media, um, basic enlistment systems. Training by battle. Oh god. Officer clerks. Well. Curtail the Great Lilies. The mutiny in Zagan, huh? Also, this is on historical, so. And the Europe. Oh, there they go. The council convenes. Also, I have no. I have like literally no direction of which way we want to go, so. The Avatar of Zuska and the High Quartermaster marched us to the body under the room in which the representatives of various teams argue. You think after we settle that, going to we going to get a fine? Just we're going to get along just fine. You think wrong. At least it's more civil than regular discussions between idealists and conservatives. Even Rosaz Orza himself appeared. Out of all actors captured to play along as minister, Zelensky started to really dig this whole idea. It's forever. It was commendable, even inspiring. Even companions it began. Even though I personally disagree with your approach, I know Scotty's face close to your heart. So the way I see it, we have three options: firearms in the back, bed rock up a course. Nothing can be achieved without them. Trucks without rocks, without logistics, nothing matters. Watercraft, it's fuel efficient, brings us opportunities used by a few others. We're gonna go with that one. Two military factories better than none. Who knew economic policy? Success, economic reforms proposed on the Jamboree proved to have been successful. Our production is booming, each and every scout is ensure that the true scouting will prevail. Alright, nice. Raise tariffs for seed products. Um, <coughs> a city is home to many things we have lots of conflict with. Mass produced, shoddy products may just be one of the most repulsive forms of bile that's out in the world. In that regard, we made the decision to make sure that items are unappealing as possible. While skyrocketing the price to the point where they get pushed out of the market by good old country style alternatives. Um, I don't want to do that. I don't mind doing some of this stuff instead, though. Hmm. Mm.
Kind of we want to do this. Every service, every man in the service are by ideal, ideals. So called civilian population is part of our struggle. Whether they want to admit it or not, they live on our territory, protected by us, and if we fail, they'll suffer as well. It's only natural that mass mobilization must ensue. And of course, it's going to place in populace to taste the life in the army. Oh. Conservative's plan. So, Ozza began. We concluded that the methods proposed by the ZHO representatives will be the backbone of our future prosperity. Before we're done with the issue of the economy, we need to address what our future potential will be focused on. The ZHP members gave each other knowing looks. The army, their leader exclaimed, we've already wasted the capabilities of our population on indulgences and indolence instead of the following the partisan's way. The least we can do is use the ZHR's methods to bolster our soldiers. Objection, the voice of the ZHR leader, was harsh and determined. The question of the military is dealt with in another line of voting. We recognize the importance of taking care of the army, but we cannot overlook the fact that it cannot function without a strong civilian economy. If it were up to me, you'd be detained for sabotaging the military. The chaotic argument erupted once more. I can't believe these guys, or as a whispered disheartened. Then he gave a long look to the high quartermaster sitting next to him. What would you be suggesting be, Companion Zoska? Since no faction would bring this up anytime soon, I suggest we focus on infrastructure and logistics as a compromise. Um, ZH, uh, makes more sense? Oh no. Conservative. Oh, this is slowly going up more. Honestly, we could use it. Gray Lily Auxiliaries. The Gray Lilies are our best union. They used to enforce scout law among civilians and scouts alike and have garnered and acquired the reputation of many idealist drill instructors. Then their impeccable conduct and skill inspire and motivate others, and as they are seeking our permission to attach them to their own units. Hey, they should make firearms now. And uniforms too, that's good. So, like, division within our ranks, Grey Lilies, of course, um, part of some legacy, conservative economic plan, reducing carbon emissions for now, ancestral tactics, just like Parsons. Uh, from bygone era, scouts capable of defending troops perimeter with subterfuge and ambushes. Today's long times are no less favorable for a regular warfare than ages long gone. Our high command believes we should continue leveraging the strategy to its fullest and strike uncertainty and our enemies wherever and whenever they dare to step into our territory. Well, we could try. We could certainly try. Oh. Skyrocket city accident cities. City living has always been too easy. The concrete walls of the commons area housing complex have always been a very alluring retreat for the denizens. So let's make them cozy lives just a little less pleasant. Raising tax for everyone in those great holes to make them reconsider the countryside may actually be, better, be, be a better place to live. Pass, pass by bigger villages. We live in a large village of not a city without a fancy plaque, given to by a monarch a few centuries ago. It's not just big old stain on the nature of their heraldry gifted brother, dressed in an overcoat, pretending to hold up the same values as the little harmonious communities not plagued by the industrial rot. Simply letting these hidden refugees or uh, indecency run wild would be an indescribable failure in the face of our ideals. Forced resettlement of the cities. Huh. Actually, can we get that? Prerequisites prevailed. Oh. It's a uh, free ra re it's free real estate. We just found a pristine bunker from before the collapse, stashed with the big splat guns, armored vehicles, and combat drones. Now the conservatives insist on including all this hardware in our operations right now. Wait. While the idealists insist on keeping only in small arms, a few miscellaneous supplies, and selling the rest. The most zealous of us flung the idea of destroying the stashes altogether and condemning them as a dishonorable anathema to our ways. Don't want to do this one. Overall, it's not bad. Do we train as much as we possibly could? Ancestral text. Oh, just sure, why not? We'll go logistics. And you will go with something, I don't know. It's, fr it's free real estate. Every child of scout, as all your kids belong to us. Of course. Um, did everybody this one early? Maybe. To create a new, stronger nation, we'll train the youngest in their ways so they won't stray even from their old, in their old years. Yeah. Whatever child will finally have a term to do within our organization, there'll be no excuse for weakness, dis dissent, childish rebelliousness within our pristine ranks. Of course not. I love to hear the hidden bunker. Those are in Jackin's office. Jan Kolbosowski mumbles his marching with a squad through the dreadful marshes near Vilun. The skull was getting thoroughly soaked because of the rain. After he completed Rudy's task and found Duda's family, the scoutmaster made sure that Rudy's lapdogs would be sent to the harshest patrols. 
Why does the scout have to install so much scouting? As if the weather wasn't bad enough, the squad he was dispatched with couldn't shut up about their stance on the ZHP politics. The Great Lilies will doom us. Let's stop sedition and destroy Bull in the first place. As if who's in charge would somehow change the mother we have to trudge through. The discussion ended abruptly. When one of the scouts he sent as a vanguard returned with the news about a hidden government bunker full of weapons. It's quite a fine, don't you think, companion? asked the young scout. Indeed it is, replied Kobazowski. It doesn't change the fact that the kid have sent us out of this massive rain sort of pass he had in his thoughts. Let's get a close look. Turning out the bunker was full of relatively new rifles, grenade launchers, and even some drones and armored vehicles. Not so compatible with the orthodox scouting way. Okay, I've got to send a letter to a command about this. You can already hear various factions arguing, saying things like, We can only keep the honorable weapons. All this gear can help us fight our enemies. Why would that hurt our stability? Destroy the whole stash here now? Um, we're gonna get this one. Ah, setting cities. If there's an antithesis to the scouting ways, it's an urban center. Atomized, a generous society that pursue comfort. comfort. Regardless of how detached from nature it is, a few nimbly, nimby or not in my backyard regulations and a blockade of the commerce should sever the real dependency on them, inhibit the growth, and to shake off their populace into falling into the fruit basket of the eternal summer action like pears and orchard. Orchard. Oh, bomb. When removed, frightening. Frightening factories and frightened factories, frighteningly work, frightening workers, rot and suit along the walls, crawling, wintry horror, or dark withering. Oh, great arc! Oh boy, luck, plus arc parts. Well, okay. The inauguration. The sun started to set on the late autumn afternoon, and. and Bores, a cool breeze sweeping through the park, inviting the slightly damp, dried up leaves to the hectic dance. Uh, two vigil lights burned dimly before the bust of the Tazus Kosciusko, uh, the only, being the only meager source of light besides the distant tree lamps. One symbolizing scale law, and the other the pledge. A Polish flag hangs loosely off the pillar upon which a general lieutenant's lightness provides, or presides, before which a group of scouts had assembled, organizing themselves into three lines of six. The commandant, an older ZHR wanderer, looked through the team, a mixed bag in all regards. He's not the kind of thing he's very used to. ZHR used to be very strict in organizing the scouts. He dismissed the thought, times changed, quickly counted the team, everything seemed and checked out. He turned his gaze to the great lily, standing beside him, and gave him a nod. It's time for the first Bredsbord scout team to get their scouts' crosses. I, with full honesty, wish to devote my life to serving God in Poland. New social order. The reforms we implement will take some time to take root for good, but we're sure that our shining example, a new judiciary system, will result in a more virtuous society that will not fail Poland again. We cannot afford to repeat our past mistakes. Of course not. No one is. Holy Cross Society, huh? Oh, uh, this guy. Robert. Roberto. Good morning, Mr. Stanislaw. Zierowski was greeted by the cafeteria worker. What can I serve you today? Good morning, Jan. The same thing as always. He said put the money on the counter. Haven't heard that. John disappeared to the back door to prepare his best coffee. That may or may not have been smuggled from the territories of the flower consortium. In the meantime, Zierowski lied back on his chair and opened a, re a recent Be Prepared magazine. From which you usually got the information about the scout's shenanigans. Read anything interesting, sir? John asked, handing Jezjorski his drink. Not really, he was lying, obviously. There was a no move for conversation. Dudes actually did it. He thought to himself. On the first page, there was a lengthy passage about the new regulations imposed on the city merchants, such as Jezjorski and on cities in general. Growing urban slums, goods of undesirable quality, much needed restrictions. Sandy Slack kept mumbling while reading the more outrageous parts. I was already struggling. Uh, to make ends meet, as does everyone else in the business. As not like those pine cone eaters will offer any social aid. If they won't back down, the subsequent collapse of scout control cities will make Bauti or Bauti look like pre uh, Warsaw when compared to Sierdas. Sierda. Sierdas. At least that dude, my neighbor, had his kids sent on an obligatory scout mission. Jezorski was trying to console himself as he read the published new list of conscripts. Bad time for business. Ah, so we're going to lose a thousand effort no matter what. Okay. C'est la vie. Don't screw with me. A scout put the service to his country, and not just first, but last too. And many think it's too busy themselves with the laws argue that bodily chastity uh, is no less vital than to a temperance. Uh, there he believed that a scout must make love to nothing but his or her rifle, no other lover but Poland. The less hard-line debaters propose a grand exemption, an uh, exception, and group assign a partner to those who perform outstanding deeds as an act, or as a form of incentive to act. The idealist community. Rudy was returning to war to keep from a trip to Sirads. Overseeing new training camps, as the jeep was approaching the fortification of the scout's cavalry, saw a truck stop by one of the gates. 
What do you mean it can't be sold? It was perfectly fine just two weeks ago. New laws. Uh, guard responded mechanically. Scots are not allowed to indulge by eating or drinking articles deemed luxurious. Luxurious? It's just sugar. The trader couldn't believe his ears. I don't have time for this. Pack up your or your cargo will be confiscated. Then he saluted Rudy's convoy and ordered his men to open the second gate destined for the officials. They passed the truck without seeing how the situation could conclude. The Samaritan better stop acting up or he won't be trading anything at all, Rudy thought. When they finally drove past the gate, Rudy saw the whole complex and was renovated to a train a new wave of conscripted children. Our recruiters started a search for strong and smart children from the age of three and screwed them into a new system. Holy crap. The willingness of their parents is not necessary, yet they are often enthusiastic about the prospect of the scouts training and sure security and food for their offspring. I wish the littlest ones had time for the child, but however we don't have really choose can't really choose a reality that we live in. While the other factions waste precious resources for their frivolous caprice, we have to have a real chance to dominate the land and end the post fall chaos. We have to win, otherwise it'll be all for nothing. ZHP dominant. Celebrations began among ZHP members as unsurprisingly the large faction in our state has managed to assert their dominance over the ZHR and other similar fa small fa smaller factions. The Great Lily's subtle influence over our internal politics, the unfaltering loyalty to the Scots order, which they seamlessly passed down into to our Scots, have assured that the Fleur de Lis will fly high above our forests and bases, and above the rubble of cities abandoned, as a reminder of our nation and our partisans. Oh, Russian invades Masuria? Ah, what else is new? People are killing children all over the place. anti seed propaganda? I like that one, it's not bad. No, uh, we're not making any planes, are we? No. Oh, I guess we technically are. ZHR is not it. So you're going to put that place good ahead. Oh, that's a ZHP. ZHR is dominant. See more than straightforward. The choice that led us to this. The Great Lilies were the best in everything, so we let them leave. They have the most faith in us. We tapped their zeal. Soon enough, I didn't even mind. He led by example. It is fashion example. Methodical. Efficient. He was presented as an epitome of a scouting of powders, and whatever he did, it was our ambition to do it like him. Hunt prey like him. The butcher and skin it with the same dispassion that he had. Even as many of us were squeamish about the dirty work of skinning a fresh animal. His mere gaze was enough to replace with fear and force us to learn. Straying is inevitable. Someone somewhere will always be the weak link. Sore as old as humankind. Some fair-eyed maid steals a, steals a man's eye, gets a notion where none belong. It's like trying to enforce a ban on sex. All that leads is to some di diligently following it, and all the others to somehow try to reach you. I begin to understand it now, possibly. The goal must be to find such contrarians and weed them out. That and those who are too weak to be useful to us. Like Adam from her squad, a weak scout in the commander's eyes, which meant that he was competent and not much more. I hear the summons, and there he is, shoved into the sleeping bag by the commander. Another bag was wiggling madly, presumably containing a, f a pretty fair maid that stole the boy's heart. I knew what would follow. Normally, we'd all move to the nearest lake, but this was happening at a lake. It was like they never saw Friday the 13th. Else, surely they know better than a date around the lakes. After all, Jason has nothing on Grey's Lily, or Grey Lilies. It's one thing to hear what happened to fornicators. That's another experience that quickly imagine them sinking into sleeping bags, tied to rocks. It'd be claustrophobic, and at least they weren't being burned alive in them, but my mom was already rendered by my face pale. My, yeah, face pale. I almost jumped when the commander saw me like this, got something to say, he asked, watch me with a mute expression. A scout is always obedient to his parents and his superiors. I felt like the right answer to this was all the suit between me and the fate of these two. I have a better idea. The codex leaves no room for debate, the man replied, as if it was telling me what time it was while peeling potatoes, except one where the commander may block the execution. If you really need a lecture on why this has to happen, then maybe you should join him. I'm not saying they should, that you should, should live, I'm saying you should. It was busy hooking the sleeping bag up to the respective rocks. I had very little time. Adam's guilty, of course, but there's a better way of punishing him. Back in ancient Rome, a soldier's guilty of an offense would draw a lot, so each tenth man would have to be killed by his fellow soldiers. My whisper saved the boy's life, for he ordered one bag to be attached from the rocks. I went the boy like a larva from the cocoon, but the girl wasn't as lucky as he was. The lily stood before the pe pennant, pennant, making him first look him in the eye, and offered him something he never offered anyone else as long as he served. Mercy. Uh, provided, of course, that they burn the boy burns the bridge that led him astray. Blam. He spoke nothing this next day or next. This day or next. He set up his shelter later on that day with a mute, methodical precision, walked and washed like a zombie. But as a scout, he performed well. That's all the Lily cared about. Soon enough, I had his ear. If I objected, I'd die with them. Not if I did it, nothing. They both die. But a solution not to spare them, but to do what I do. Make lemonade. It was the right thing to do. This was for certain. It meant one person marked for death would be spared. I saved a life today and gave the scouts a well-drilled comrade with one certain robust obedience. Changing the world is not a way to survive, but surviving is what I do. Fatherland, education, and virtue. We are ready. At the beginning, few believed that a state based on scouting values, separated that from the seemingly all-important access to the free city, could exist. The wise leadership of our scoutmaster proved uh, adopting a truly scouting way is a superior course of action to anything those within urban circles could, or cities could ever dream of. Well, I guess. We are neo-nationalists here. Because everyone's killing themselves. 
We're ready. Oh boy. Hooligans of Yeah, we are, we're on the border. We are on the border. I wish these guys had uh Oh my god, they're so slow. Is there even any point making these things? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Is there anything Oh, I guess kamikaze strikes. Alright. Oh. I guess we're ready. Last sections. <coughs> if ten years ago I'd be told that Polish scout organization would be organizing an offensive military campaign in the scope of this void video ship, I'd laugh my butt off and tell the nerd to stop playing map painting games for so long. Today, I feel as insecure as a lot of those nerds. As though each of us is stronger than all of them combined. I'm doing this for real. Even if life is a simulation, this is still I planning um, <coughs> invasions by what ones as an organization for boys and girls of the nation to learn something and not to be weak. I'm going on a journey. A scout out of the forest needs to feel no shame with a scout master. We enter this new chapter in our existence with confidence of what we've achieved so far, but also fear of entering the unknown. But we need to feel no shame. Come what may. The Jews are at it again. Okay. Um, with you, Club, is a senseless thing indeed. In a place of seeing reason in the eternal slumber action, or at least joining the dialogue screw ups, they carve out their own platform and ruins of our lands for no reason. They stand in their way instead of simply existing alongside us for no reason. And they took some decrepit political commentator or journalist or whoever. Those whose achievement I remember was sitting in the talk show at a cardinal's costume saying, I am, I for one have added up my butt, worshipping him like the four letters he worships for no reason. All because they've acquired a radical Judophile attitude, you guess it, for no reason. As we ha need no reason to march them out, march at them other than that they stand in our way. Destroy coal lords. I will not be afraid of death and uh, bane until Burnham force come to Dosinine. Macbeth, Act 5, Scene 3, but if it's not the force that's coming, it's her apex predator, her protector and guardian. Our war, the true war, isn't that, it's not only against the uh, colliers who vivisect the planet for its treasures their grandfathers once did. It's against viewing the planets of meek matter. We need to be given strength and meaning to sacrifice for fires of industry. The planet sustains us, even our minds, to live in harmony with them is to be at your best. Just like how heroes of J.R.R. Tolkien's work march against the evil seeking to prevent or pervert Middle Earth for their own goals, so we march. No ants alongside us, no matter, we got this. Just in case, we're going to save. We don't have enough divisions on the front line, but neither do they, so... Uh, we'll see what happens, you know. Um... Hope we do well. Oh, crap. Never mind, hold. Um, are we supposed to be able to do anything here? What are we missing? Anti-tank. We got melee equipment. Militia. I don't know! How can we not do anything here? Oh, they made their divisions even bigger than ours. That's not fair. Um, I might have to go back and actually like re redo all this because this is not very fair at all. Um, but I'll probably explore this and, ex and probably do a lot of this off screen. So it might be actually good for us to. Uh, I don't know, maybe the end the episode here because I need to learn how to do actually do all this stuff here because this we don't get told very much how to do anything. Here. But if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. As we'll see what we can do with the autonomous troop of ZH. Uh, P and see where we go in the future. Thanks for watching. Have a great Polish rest of your day.